Welcome to Proofpoint's how-to video tutorial series which is aimed at sharing Proofpoint's professional services best practices for configuring the Proofpoint Protection Server's features and functionalities. This video tutorial demonstrates how to enable encryption within the Proofpoint Protection Server or PPS. Proofpoint encryption secures outbound and inbound email messages as they cross different network domains. When a user logs into Proofpoint Encryption to read a secure message, the user's login and password are checked against the user's authentication attribute. There are four phases to enable encryption. First, secure a messaging portal for end users. Second, add a logo to the branding template. Third, configure a response profile. And fourth, modify the external password policy. The secure messaging portal is how an external recipient will connect to the secure reader on the Proofpoint system to register, enroll, and read the secure message. For an end user to access the secure message portal, a primary encryption domain is needed. This domain is derived from the system organization that is encrypting messages. The domain name will display to users, offering assurance that the digital signature in the encrypted message is generated by a valid domain. Finally, the secure messaging portal requires a DNS as well as a third-party certificate generated for the portal. These certificates will need to be signed by a third-party certificate provider, such as GoDaddy, DigiCert, or Thought. Access the System tab, Certificates module, and Certificates page. Displayed is a certificate that has been received from Komodo. The certificate can be obtained by creating a certificate request. Click on the Generate Certificate Request button at the top of the screen and input the server host name. Once the certificate is requested, take the key and go to a selected third-party certificate provider. Once the registration is complete, import the certificate by selecting the Import button. Click the Browse button to locate the certificate. Make a selection from the Format drop-down list. In this case, select the PEM format. A password is optional for a certificate that uses the PKCS12 format. Then, select the Import button. The newly imported certificate will now display in the Certificates list. Once the certificate is imported into the system, it can be applied to the proper service. Begin by selecting the Services page to view the secure reader services on each of the agents in the cluster. Note that all customers do not have secure reader on their master. In this scenario, scroll down and select the Mail Filtering agent. Anytime you see the term Secure Reader, apply the certificate. This is done by selecting the drop-down menu and clicking on the certificate. As always, remember to save your changes. Now that the certificate is added, the web portal is secure. The Proofpoint Protection Server includes default templates that the administrators can use right away. To access these templates, navigate to the Systems tab, End User Services module, and the Branding Templates page. There are several branded templates. Select the System Default Encryption Branding Template. Next, select the Logo tab at the top of the screen and then click on the OK button to continue. To locate and load a custom logo, select the Browse button and identify the logo to be used. Select the Upload Custom Logo button to import the logo image. The logo image must be formatted as a JPEG or a PNG file no larger than 200 by 50 pixels. When finished, select the Save button at the bottom right side of the screen. Once the branding template is selected, review the Response Profile by selecting the Information Protection tab, Encryption Module, Settings drop-down, and the General page. Begin by specifying the URL where users will be going. 
the fully qualified domain name of the Proofpoint Encryption Secure Reader Interface is the domain that users need to reach to decrypt messages. The URL for this domain displays to end users in a browser. In this scenario, we have received a certificate from the URL. The primary encryption domain is derived from the system in the organization that is encrypting messages. This domain name displays to users to assure them that the digital signature in the encrypted message is generated by a valid domain. As shown here, the branding template has been previously selected. A response profile defines the options available to recipients when they forward or reply to encrypted messages. Select the Manage Response Profiles link and then click on the Default System Response Profile. Proofpoint provides a default system recipient response profile that you can use immediately and it applies at the organizational level with various default settings. Proofpoint recommends that you use the default system recipient response profile exclusively. Within the General tab, change the Retain Email Decryption Keys to display 30, 60, or 90 days. The Reply tab controls the options associated with replying to a secure message. You can also control whether users can send a copy to themselves when they reply, reply to all, or forward a secure message. The Forward tab controls the options associated with forwarding a secure message. By selecting Off for the Enable Forward parameter, you're disabling the ability for anyone to forward a secure message. Returning to the general settings within the encryption module, scroll down to review the External Password policy. This policy can be managed by selecting the Manage External Password Policy link. Select this link to go to the Password Policies page via the Systems tab and User Management module. The Proofpoint Protection Server includes pre-configured password policies that can be changed but not deleted. For example, an Administrator Policy for Administrators, an Encryption Users Policy for users outside the organization, and an Internal Users Policy for the user community inside the organization. For our purpose, select the Encryption Users Policy. Select the Syntax tab to change the requirements of the password. The minimum and maximum password length can be edited as many customers choose, between 7 and 30 characters. It's important to define if the password requires a number, a special character, or upper and lower case. Select the Password Reset tab to have external secure message recipients reset their password by email or by challenge questions and answers. Most customers choose email as the password reset option, as this allows for the end user to request a password reset without having to contact the original sender. To trigger the encryption of a message, add a pre-selected term to the message header. This is done using a default email firewall rule. Scroll down and select the Subject Line Encrypt rule. By default, the rule will encrypt messages that include the term Encrypt or Secure within the message subject. These terms can be viewed within the Conditions window. Returning to the Rules page, a plug-in option is provided by Proofpoint. The Desktop Plug-in Encrypt rule adds a Send Securely button within the Microsoft Outlook interface. The 32 and 64-bit plugin can be requested from a Proofpoint sales representative or from professional services. Once the plugin is received, initiate the plugin rule by selecting the checkbox and then saving the changes. In summary, we have secured a messaging portal for end users, added a logo to the branding template, configured a response profile, and modified the external password policy. We have also reviewed how to send a secure email by triggering an email firewall rule and Microsoft plugin. Thank you for watching our brief how to video tutorial on how to enable encryption within the Proofpoint Protection Server, or PPS. For additional information on our products, visit our knowledge base 
at https colon forward slash forward slash proofpointcommunities.force.com. For questions, comments, or feedback on this tutorial, please email us at training at proofpoint.com.